program director dr manoj mahajan uh, medical oncologist from udaipur uh, he'll be talking on the topic current uh, current treatment landscape of her to negative early breast cancer and this session is sponsored by astrazeneca so may i invite uh, dr manoj mahajan thank you kashish uh extending to the treatment part like we, what we discussed so far in hormone receptor positive now we are coming to the hormone receptor negative early breast cancer so like we have seen now there are tablet oral form of therapies which have changed the whole uh, perspective in terms of treatment of uh, hormone receptor positive patient so what about her to uh, negative early breast cancer so we'll just go through so these are the main points i'll going to cover background we have since morning we have seen india has like uh, 14% of the breast cancers uh, most the most common cancer is the breast cancer and almost constitutes about 14% of all the patients nearly 1.5 lakhs every year and most of them like 60 to 70% are in very advanced stage as compared to the us population where only 30% are in the advanced stages so uh, if we see what are the incidents overall incidents of germline braca mutation in such patients who are her2 negative nearly Uh, one quarter of patients will recur in next 5 years and nearly 10% 9 to 10% patients uh, with her2 negative disease have germline braca mutations so that is again a huge number if we uh, sub segment to the numbers exact numbers so that comes around 1.5 lakhs and then her2 negative that will turn around around 20000 to 30000 patients per year So, what are the current treatment pathways for HER2 negative breast cancers? So, if we lo look at the since morning discussions, most of the standard treatment is new adjuvant chemotherapy. Any patients who are having more than 0.5 centimeter tumor and triple negative breast cancer, we usually uh, go for new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery based on BCS versus mastectomy and uh, followed by radiotherapy as per the indication and subsequently adjuvant therapy to be completed. so this is the current treatment algorithm where we go for chemotherapy in early stage is extremely early we wait and watch if there is a residual disease then uh, after surgery then we go for the capsidabin for a two year adjuvant treatment and if there is a recurrence again we subject to chemotherapy and again wait and watch policy is usually constituted so what if the hormone receptor positive so in this pathway only the hormonal therapy will added extra apart from the other pathways and this is uh, in recurrence score uh, in the morning we have discussed the uh, high 21 gene recurrence score also uh, based on that adjuvant treatment is also decided so what are the recent changes basically i am uh, emphasizing uh, this talk on what are the recent changes in the early breast cancer treatment as we can see apart from the routine pathway there is pembrolizumab which is a immunotherapy olaparib one in uh, it's a oral uh, tablet in germline braca mutated patients in both the groups hormone receptor positive as well as tnbc triple negative breast cancers so is there any evidence or based on what evidence all these recommendations have come up and what are the changes that we'll going to see in subsequent slide what are the studies supporting these drugs so ncs in guidelines have already included for high risk patients we can include the olaparib if germline braca one two mutations are positive and pembrolizumab as immunotherapy component and still ac followed by docetaxel every 3 weeks is still a standard of care and most of us we follow this treatment only so what is the braca mutation in breast cancers what is its implications as we have since morning we have seen if braca mutation is there the whole aspect of surgery also changes where we think of the breast conservation we go for the extended treatment in terms of bilateral mastectomy bi plus bilateral oophorectomy so 
germline mutation changes the surgical decision as well so why is it important because this subset of disease subset of patients behave differently in terms of these patients are younger than the other patients these patients uh, if positive then they impart us a change in surgical decisions so this is the braca mutations have been identified in approximately 5 to 35% of the breast cancer patients tnbc it's more common mixed uh, hormone uh, receptor positive disease status and not reach so what are the decision changes if braca mutation testing is changed surgery we have seen and in adjunct setting apart from chemotherapy we also add olaparib into the treatment in adjunct setting so these are the nccn criteria where we say there is a high hereditary high risk in individuals diagnosed with the early breast cancers if age is less than 45 years age less than 50 years with additional breast cancer primary or family history criteria more than 51 years then family history criteria and personal history uh, and if any age then we have these parameters where we go for the braca testing so this we have seen as uh, the disease is aggressive in younger patients we need there are changes in the new adjunct setting plus ad, uh, in the surgical decisions as well as adjunct setting these are the changes recommended because of the aggressiveness of the disease so how do we identify the high risk disease so there are practically there are few methods like based on the tumor staging if tumor is stage 2 as compared to stage 1 the hazard ratio increases of 1.83 and stage 3 it's 4.4 so based on the stage high risk increases so as the higher the stage higher will be the risk of recurrence then presence of positive nodes if number of nodes are positive again it will increase the risk failure to achieve path cr after a new adjunct chemotherapy this is one of the new parameter coming up and peeping up in the clinical trials where uh, we are planning to achieve this path cr because of the new adjunct uh, due to new adjunct setting so if we see path cr achievement it's 0.24 versus uh, 0.49 in patient the efs in such subgroup is different then the high cps is clinical pathological score and eg score that is again defined as scoring points uh, against the staging histological grade and based on that we define the five year dfs rate where a zero cps score is 91% dfs rate where six score has a 0% five year dfs rate molecular test oncotype dx and hazard ratio uh, for a distant recurrence is high versus low is nearly 5.2 so we have certain benefit risk calculators based on this we decide the high risk of the disease so coming to the olaparib uh, where we use it as adjuvant this is the trial which proved olympia a trial which proved the importance of addition of adjuvant treatment in the breast cancer patients where germline braca mutation so eligible patients were mainly germline braca1 braca2 mutated then stage 2 stage 3 breast cancer her2 negative completed local treatment and received six cycles of new adjuvant chemotherapy containing anthracyclines and or taxins these groups were divided into two new adjuvant group and adjuvant group which were again further tnbc and hormone receptor positive received new adjuvant surgery and followed by rt as required and in adjuvant group surgery was done earlier where tnbc patients were mostly t2 or node positive and hormone receptor were having four or more lymph nodes positive so it was randomized in one as to one fashion where the epidemiological characteristic were quite well matched including braca1 braca2 muta mutation percentage in both the arms premenopausal where nearly 60% population was premenopausal one third were postmenopausal bilateral breast involvement was around 3 to 4% nearly 3/4 patient were having grade 3 disease and based on stage we can see uh, most of the patients were in the stage 2 group so looking at the idfs invasive disease free survival and olaparib reduce the risk of recurrence or death by 42% hazard ratio of 0.48 
with quite a significant p value at the end of 3 years so one year additional follow up again hazard ratio of 0.63 quite significant at the end of 4 year volapery having idfs rate of 82% versus 75% Olaparib demonstrated a significant OS benefit with 90% of patients alive at 4 years in the Olaparib arm. So still I would like to mature this data in more terms in terms of the, if we are looking at the OS we would like to have, but the graphs are separating and we are expecting to be these graphs to be separated over a period of time. So longer follow up uh, also confirm DDFS benefit of adjoint Olaparib versus placebo with over 7% of patients free of the distant recurrence at 4 years. So what was the incidence of second primary in non-breast cancer? Uh, it was almost halved in patients who received olaparib. As we can see distant recurrence in the olaparib arm 9.6% versus placebo arm it was 14.9%. Ipsilateral recurrence 1% and in placebo arm it was 2%. Contralateral breast recurrence 1.6% and in placebo arm it was 2%. Second primary nearly 2.5% versus 1.5 which included ovarian peritoneal fallopian tube as expected because of the BRCA syndrome. So if we see the uh, forest plot, so most of the sub site analysis where the use of adjunct or new adjunct setting this benefited plus prior platinum or versus without platinum. HR status or TNBC, most of them benefited in the adjoint olaparib arm. So this is consistent across the all the subgroups. OS benefit has also been across received across the all the subgroups of the in the trial. Nearly 70% patients completed the treatment according to the protocol without the need for the dose of reduction. If you look, look at the overall side effects, the nausea, fatigue, uh, anemia was uh, quite common in the olaparivam that has been already elucidated in the other trials also like ovarian cancer where these uh, side effects are common but most of them are quite manageable. Anemia was the one of the commonest side effect in terms of hematological uh, side effects blood need of blood transfusion was also assessed in the trial and the blood transfusion were required quite infrequently in such patients so uh, at the end of for the olaparib study for those who had surgery first adjoint olaparib is recommended for patients with triple negative breast cancer with tumor size of more than 2 cm and hormone receptor positive disease at least four axillary lymph node involved and for patients with the new adjuvant tnbc any residual cancer or hormone receptor positive residual disease with erpr positive plus cps eg score of more than three this was what uh, used in the uh, clinical trial so uh, we'll just quickly flip through the other Ne uh, recent advances which are being used in the early breast cancer including capsetabine, uh, immunotherapy and uh, abemaciclib as sir have already discussed. So capsetabine for residual cancer it was mainly in stage 1 to 3b hormone receptor negative breast cancer, uh, non path CR residual disease after new adjuvant chemotherapy and surgery. So these were assessed with the capsetabine 2500 milligram per meter square day 1 to day 14 regimen every 3 weekly versus hormonal therapy alone along so primary endpoint was DFS and secondary endpoint was OS. So if we see the disease free survival analysis of full set capsitabine has shown the benefit over a long term almost uh, 5 year DFS with capsitabine is 74 percent versus the 67 percent for the control arm. And the OS, if we see the overall survival benefit, it is nearly 78.7% versus 70% in the control arm. So role of immuno-oncology in the early breast cancer, pembrolizumab is the upcoming uh, immunotherapy in early breast cancer, where uh, this trial schema has been used like newly diagnosed TNBC, T1C versus node positive or T2, T4 on early node positive. ECOG, PSPS, where pembrolizumab was used along with the 
paclicarbo regimen initially and then followed by the doxorubicin cyclophosphamide so they have reversed the chemotherapy protocol what we commonly give so it was randomized uh, after surgery pembrolizumab uh, pembrolizumab maintenance for 9 cycles so total 17 cycles of pembrolizumab along with the chemotherapy versus were planned versus chemotherapy standard arm so first efs analysis set at the ia2 uh, was and patch cr if we can see the patch cr rate was 64% versus 51% and at the end of 18 months of median follow up 85% versus 91% uh, in the immunotherapy arm so both the groups were quite well matched and the, if we look at the efs patch cr status in the keynote 522 was nearly matching so common side effects associated with the immunotherapy were mainly uh, endocrine side effects like hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism adrenal insufficiency diabetes hepatitis and sometimes gbs so abimasic this has been already discussed so i'll just come to the conclusions so to the con to conclude uh, we have to do the braca testing in most of the patients where we have to assess the high risk status for the her2 negative early breast cancer patients and if braca is mutated we have to add the olaparib in for one year and if braca is wild type we can go for considering pembrolizumab in adjuvant setting and in hormone receptor positive uh, hormonal therapy should be instituted early thank you